Hello. Did you know that you can see things that you're not even looking at? Try it. Keep your eyes fixed on my nose in the middle of your screen. Now, without moving your eyes from my nose, you'll notice that you can still see other things in the room around you. Perhaps you can see the television remote. Perhaps you can see a fish in a tank. Perhaps you can see your identical twin brother, Dr. Zahn, picking his nose at the lab bench as usual. <laughs> now, they'll seem a bit fuzzier than normal, but you can see these things out of the corner of your eyes, which is why I know that Dr. Zahn is still picking his nose. <laughs> Well, that's because our eyes use two types of vision at the same time. Central vision, which is here, and peripheral vision, which is all the way out here. So this is your peripheral vision area. If you were in the lab looking here, this would be your central vision area. And Zond and I would be in your peripheral vision area, looking grey and a bit distorted. Because you're watching us on a screen, you're actually seeing everything with your central vision. But we've altered this image to highlight what your peripheral vision sees. Phew, back to normal. But what is going on? Why do things in your central field of vision look different to things in your peripheral vision? Well, it's all to do with the cells in your eyes called cones and rods. Now, come here and stand on my eye. OK, but you're going to have to lie down no, and maybe no, no, I can... not that eye, this eye. So that's what you did with all the gloves. Now, this is exactly what an eye looks like if you cut it in half. Well, it's not, is it? I mean, it's massive and it's made of green gloves. So this bit at the front here, this is the pupil or the black hole at the front of your eye, and light comes in here through the lens and hits the back of your eye or the retina. The retina covers most of the inside surface of your eye. And remember this picture? This is what the surface of your retina looks like magnified under a very powerful microscope. These cells are called rods, and these are called cones. We're going to show you how they help you see. Your cones, I'm rods. Let's make a retina. Your red cone receptors are great at seeing colours and details in bright light. You have around six to seven million of them in each eye, and they give you your central vision, which is why there's a higher number of these super cones in the centre of your retina. Your blue rods are found at the edge of your retinas. You have around 120 million of them in each eye. They make up your peripheral vision so you can see things out of the corner of your eye. Now, we're going to show you just how important your peripheral vision is. Zond, you're going to need these. The DXPVRG Dr. Zand Peripheral Vision Removal Goggles. Now, I've put some blinkers on Zand so he can't see out of the corner of his eyes and he has only the use of his central vision. How are you doing, Zand? Well, I'm pretty annoyed, actually. I mean, you've stolen my peripheral vision. That's right, but it's all in the name of science. Now, to understand what Zand's seeing, put your hands around your eyes like this. It's an effect called tunnel vision, where you can only see what's straight ahead of you. We're going to see how much difference this makes to Zahn's vision in the Stacking Beakers Pyramid Peripheral Vision Challenge. So, in this challenge, we have to pick up these beakers... What beakers? ..and fill them with water from this bucket... What bucket? ..using this jug. What jug? ..and then stack them into a neat pyramid, and whoever gets there first will be the winner. Look, I think I'm going to find this quite difficult. I mean, I can't even see... Enough excuses, Zahn. Are you ready? No, I can't even know what my bucket Go! is! Go! Let's see how much difference our peripheral vision really makes. This is really difficult. I have to keep turning my head. We take our peripheral vision for granted, but everyday tasks would be much more difficult without it. Now, I'm finding this challenge particularly enjoyable, mainly because I'm beating Zand, but also because I don't have to move my head around a lot because I have my peripheral vision. Zand, you're not doing all that well. Ah! Hurry! I'm doing my hurry. best! Hurry! Fill those beakers. What's really difficult about this is that I can't see the table very easily and then I don't know where I'm going when I get back. And then I miss the jug, I have to keep looking at the cup, look at the jug, make sure they match. I'm trying to do it all in a hurry. OK, hold on, Zand. I'm going to pause this competition while I'm ahead and make it much harder for you. What? Lights, please. Now I can't see anything. Now, because I have my peripheral vision, it's easy for me to see in the dark because my rod cells, the edges of my retina, are more sensitive to light. My cones are really designed for working in bright sunshine, and so in this dark, I'm making an absolute mess. Come on. Come on, Zand, you can still do it. I reckon I can catch it. Ta-da! Oh! Oh! Lights up!
<laughs> that didn't quite go to plan. So we've shown you how you can see things out of the corner of your eyes at the same time as looking at something in front of you. And we've also shown you that the rod cells that make up your peripheral vision help you see in the dark. Wills on that challenge was thirsty work. Could you please pass me a full cup of water as... <laughs> what are you doing? Well, don't blame me, Chris. Blame the DX PVRGs, available in shops everywhere. <laughs>